Welcome, one and all, and thank you so much for choosing to stop by today's episode. It is your host, Galadon, and you are my fellow fans of Clash of Clans. In today's Clash episode, that's right, any player can easily three-star any fully maxed out base in the game, no matter your skill level, troop level, spell level, or town hall level. Okay, and then you woke up. All right, so yes, it's true. We are facing fully maxed out bases in today's episode. And also many of you have been heard saying, if Galadon can three, the strats OP. So is it true? Is Queen Charge Hybrid the strategy to run right now? Well, okay, it is one of many and we try to cover as many as we can on the channel. So make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications. And if you even want to help out a little bit more, maybe leave a like or a comment for the YouTube algorithm. And by the way, I don't mean comment. You actually say something intelligent for a change. I mean, uh, not for a change. No, not not you. Not you. It's that other guy I was talking about over there. Anyway, okay. So we are having fun attacking and it just, okay. The reason I decided to make this video was because I couldn't think of anything else to make a video about today. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, seriously. I decided I intentionally wanted to put together a video of me destroying fully maxed out Town Hall 14 bases because as of late, in the last, I would say about three weeks or so, I've been doing this way more often. And I don't know if it's me, if it's the game, something's going on and these fully maxed out bases are getting wrecked by Queen Charge Hybrid. Now I don't claim to be a three star master and yes, it is true. I rarely get more than about three or four triples in an average Legend League day. And also I am not at the very higher levels of Legend League. So I don't expect to see the really truly well-designed tough bases a lot of these bases probably fall into the same category of that legend league base that i made a month or so ago remember that one that looked good and i thought it was going to work and then i got annihilated by skilled players yeah so that that could be along the lines of what we're seeing right here but there are some fundamentals okay there are some things that i'm trying to get right and when those go right then the rest of the attack sort of falls into place now, of course, you're going to hear me say spell timing and placement. That is always key. But really, one of the big keys that seems to be a Town Hall 14 winner, and I've talked about this before, but I need to hit it again for those of you that weren't listening last time, and that is try not to take on the Town Hall itself with your main attacking force. Get in there with a Sui Hero or a Queen Charge or maybe even a Blimp, something that is going to cost less housing space, troop effort, to take out and avoid the poison bomb. Of course, that is one of the big keys right there. Slows everything down, causes time fails, wipes out troops, and just is, is not a lot of fun to watch happen to your troops. Now, here we go with my Archer Queen clutching out the three star in. That's right, with about two seconds left. With about two seconds left. Okay, that, that actually, that was way more exciting three star than I thought. Uh, and I just talked over the whole thing. Okay, so here we go with another fully maxed out base. And again, the intention, trying to get in and wipe out the town hall if at all possible. And yes, by the way, I did recently sneak in, get it? <laughs> See what I did there? Some sneaky goblins into my attacking army. And that is just to try to help out a little bit with the Archer Queen's funneling. Turns out it may be my Legend League three star secret weapon as, oh man, it is making it so much easier for me to send that Archer Queen in after the Town Hall. Now remember, one Sneaky Goblin by itself can wipe out either a Dark Elixir Pump, a Gold Mine, or an Elixir Collector. Two can wipe out a storage building by themselves. And again, you can send them in before you do anything else. You've got that time while they're invisible that they are going to be eating away and wiping out those buildings. So that is why I think, and now that I'm actually taking a look at these attacks, that seems to be the key difference. What was I thinking? Yes, of course, that is the one thing that I have changed in my attack strategy recently is the Sneaky Goblin. So here I freeze the Town Hall just to make sure the healers survive. That is something I've kind of learned from Tribe, and that is don't sweat if your healer is at 90% health or 9% health. They're still going to get the job done. Just try to keep them alive in case they end up at an awkward angle like that. And you'll notice right here, I mean, yes, unfortunately, a lot of the miners and hogs are going to kind of wander through the poison. They get stuck 
stuck in the tornado trap, but eventually they head off to the right hand side and a well placed and timed freeze spell helps prevent a little bit of damage and repair on the right hand side. We're going to get in after the eagle as well. And now the clan castle finally comes out, but it's not going to be that much of an issue. Those super minions are only super bad for your queen charge. Everybody else, they can usually annihilate them pretty quickly. At this point, I'll admit, it wasn't really a foregone conclusion that this would be a three star. There's a lot of buildings still up. There's a lot of high hit point storages. There's the Inferno Tower sitting there burning away. But notice at the bottom of your screen, the Archer Queen, and that always is a big key. Keeping her alive late in the battle, she is going to pump out so much damage. And of, of okay. I, I did not think she was going to get stuck on that wall of all walls, but yeah, so there she is. She can pretty much strike every single building in the rest of the base if she goes around the outside. No, she still is stuck on that. Uh, unbelievable. Anyway, so yeah, she's going to survive till the end only because she's really a non-factor. We've got plenty of other troops that are out in front wiping out every other building and we're not quite as close on time this time as we were in that last attack. And yes, sometimes that does become an issue. I tend to get a little over-focused on my queen charge entry, and sometimes that comes down to those final seconds. Here I have a massive, incredibly relaxing 13 seconds left, and I wipe out the third star. Okay, uh, let's move on to another attack. I just realized I destroyed Princess there. Sorry about that, Princess. And uh, let's see if we can get in after the town hall one more time with the queen charge and yes using the sneaky gabos so on the right hand side one is going to wipe out that elixir collector boom she is going to go to the left then we try to take down that gold mine not quite going to work out but if we can open up this wall right in front of her then we know that she pretty much has nowhere else to go once the gold mine goes down there she goes and guaranteed a flawless funnel as she walks in after the town hall so the town hall no longer going to be a factor so it's at this point once i realize i've successfully funneled the queen into the town hall itself I can kind of take a look at what angle I want to come in for the rest of the attack. And what I mean is let's funnel far side with the Siege Barracks Barbarian King, send everybody else down the middle, and it usually has a little bit to do with which way the queen decides to go. Now we got to deal with these CC troops, poison freeze, and then make sure the Archer Queen stays alive. Hate it when she uses her ability early, but she is going to last a little bit longer. And since she went left, I'm going to go far left with the Barbarian King and the Siege Barracks to complete the funnel on the outside. Now, of course, I... There's room for improvement on my king funneling, like the direction that the king is going to take, right? We need to kind of look into that a little more carefully because as you can see, they're wrapping around down towards the bottom. We wanted them to go up, not down, and that's not ideal. But everybody else rolls in, Archer Queen in the core, Hogs and Miners, and now it just comes down to, you guessed it, spell timing and placement, and of course the abilities of the Queen, the Warden, and the Royal Champion. Hopefully the Archer Queen stays alive a little bit longer. Sometimes that main attacking force, the Hogs and the Miners, can take a little bit of pressure off the Archer Queen, and she in turn takes the pressure off of the attacking force, the Hogs and the Miners. On the right-hand side, you can see she's not doing so well. She's used her ability and she's over there with that scatter shot in her face and she is eventually going to lose the battle and the healers are going to try to move on to help somebody else out right there. Okay, but now we're getting most of the way through, over two thirds of the way through this base and we all know that a single Fargan Turno is no match for Hog Riders and Miners so that's going to easily get wiped out of the top of the village and there we go. They don't look very healthy but they're surviving long enough to get through a couple more key defenses, that scatter shot is worrisome, right? That doesn't look good, but remember, we still have two archers, and they can easily solo any... No, okay. We still have the royal champion's ability, and that's going to help out a little bit as she works her way over towards that scatter shot, and luckily, between her and it looks like maybe a bunch of miners, way more miners than I expected, we should be able to wipe out the scatter shot right here. There's the ability... And yes, we are going to clutch the three star. The scatter shot is down. The final defense is gone and it's looking good. Once again, once again, a little bit close on time. Under 20 seconds remain, but we pick up a three star against a fully maxed out Town Hall 14 base. I hope this video helped you guys a little bit. I know it helped me discover a little bit more about my own attacking strategy. And I thank you, Galafam, for sticking around all the way to the end of the episode. You know you are the true hashtag Galafam, and that is why I love thinking about it. and appreciate every single one of you every single day. So get out there, make the best of the rest of your day, week, month, and year. Be kind to other people, animals, and the planet. And I will see you all back here again tomorrow for more full attacks. Galigon! Galigon!
Remember, even occasionally a blind squirrel finds a nut. 